They only put repeat on the bottle so that you buy more shampoo. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you didn't know about Lizzie McGuire. Janet. I'm hearing music, seeing dancers, getting a whiff of that sweet smell of success. I didn't win the election and I didn't save the world. Yeah, but you tried. I like who I am, but I'd like to be Britney Spears. <laughs> but it's not gonna happen. I guess it's kind of silly when you put it that way. For this list, we'll be looking at little known facts about this Disney Channel show. Which of these behind the scenes facts surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. The Failed Reboot When Disney and Hilary Duff announced that they were rebooting Lizzie McGuire, everyone was thrilled. The plan was to follow Lizzie as she navigated adulthood. Two episodes of the show were even filmed, but disaster struck when creator Terry Minsky was fired due to creative differences. The battle. Like, I don't want to call it a battle because everyone's on very, like, loving terms between, you know, me and Disney and and uh, but that that's been the thing. Soon after, we learned that the network felt the show's content was too mature for Disney Plus. However, making sure the character remained just as relatable as a grown-up was a priority for Duff. She wanted the fans who grew up with Lizzie, now adults themselves, to feel seen. It only makes sense to me to shoot a show where she's acting like a 30-year-old in a modern world. She even asked to take the reboot to Hulu, but to no avail. The series was unfortunately scrapped in 2020. This is not what dreams were made of. It was just like all love, and it still is. And you nev never say never in this business, I always say that. Number 9. The Writers' Lives Lizzie McGuire was full of plot points that felt raw, fresh, and timely. It's part of what made the show so special. Apparently, a lot of that magic came from the fact that the gang's adventures were based in reality. Nina Bargiel, who was one of the show's writers, revealed that they often drew from their own experiences when crafting storylines. Whoa, it's like deja vu all over again. For instance, one of the guys was about her athletic talent and the gender dynamics that surfaced as a result. Oh, I lost to a girl, and now to reassert my male dominance, I need to beat her in front of all my friends. Similarly, Lizzie and Kate's excellent adventure and a Gordo story also arose from Bargiel's life. It's no wonder we all felt like Lizzie McGuire growing up. You're smart and you're funny and a little weird sometimes, but I wouldn't like you any other way. Number 8. The Making of Ethan Kraft Ethan Kraft was the dreamy, cool guy that Lizzie had a major crush on. Well, who is he talking to? What's he doing? What can we tell about him that we don't already know? He wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, but Ethan was undoubtedly a kind-hearted person. Funnily enough, his character was originally entirely different. In fact, Ethan Kraft was not supposed to be the guy Lizzie pined for. You know, I like you and all, but there's just no, um, oh shoot, what's that a subject in a high school that I'm never gonna pass? Chemistry? Yeah, there's just no chemistry. He was actually going to be depicted as more of a mean athlete. In fact, there was another character who was supposed to give our protagonist butterflies. But when that didn't work out, they reworked the concept to give Ethan Kraft a more substantial part of the show. We are so glad they did. You know how on the shampoo bottle has directions, right? Lather, rinse, repeat? Yeah. I don't repeat. Number 7. Hilary Duff's Audition After being fired from a show called Daddy-O, Duff wanted to quit the business and leave Los Angeles altogether. I'm hurt, I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I wish they'd vote me off this island. So when she reluctantly auditioned for Lizzie McGuire, she didn't do a great job. Luckily, it didn't matter, because the people in the room could see that she was special. You could be an actress. You look pretty good through the camera. You think? Sure. As casting director Robin Lippin put it, quote, There was something so appealing about Hillary that even when she screwed up, you still really liked her, and you were rooting for her. Further, executive producer Stan Rogov attributed Duff's approachable personality for Lizzie's popularity among viewers. In other words, the character was relatable because the actress was. Lizzie McGuire is the voice of the people, and there are more of us than there are of you, which makes hers the voice of the winner. Number 6. Hilary Duff's Outfits Though Duff initially struggled in her audition, 
Her clothes helped set her apart. If someone completely normal came to school dressed in an outrageously hip outfit, well, then they'd get the vote. Much like the character she would famously go on to play, the actress showed up to the auditions in quirky and unique outfits. She always had something fresh and exciting up her sleeve. Where'd you get those clothes? Be mysterious, be mysterious. Where do any of us get our clothes, Ethan? As such, the suits kept wanting to see more and more of her and her clothes, and she didn't disappoint. Once she was cast, Duff's fashion sense flowed into Lizzie McGuire's. Hey Lizzie, I love those pants. These are bargain basement pants, people. But they are kind of cool. Hey Lizzie, very cool pants. Thanks. According to the show's costume designers, Duff had a keen eye for fashion and wasn't afraid to try new things. As such, she helped shape the character's style in a pretty incredible way. Number 5. Stevie Sanchez Once Lizzie McGuire ended, the focus shifted to a spin-off series. I'm thinking more along the lines of first woman president, space explorer, Mrs. Matt Damon. We were set to follow Miranda's little sister Stevie Sanchez through middle school, and she was even going to have her very own cartoon character along for the ride. In other words, she could have been the next generation's Lizzie McGuire. Amazingly, the actress who was slated to play Stevie Sanchez was none other than Selena Gomez. I mean, I don't I don't care if I don't get this, but it'd be awesome, it'd be a fun experience, but you know, I'm not gonna cry if I don't get it. Sadly, the show never saw the light of day. However, Gomez got her chance to shine on the Disney Channel a few years later as Alex on Wizards of Waverly Place. When one door closes, another one opens. Oh, hello, gorgeous. Who is that? <laughs> I think you fell in love with yourself. So what? There's a lot about me to love. Number 4. Little Lizzie's Creation Lizzie McGuire went through a number of conceptual changes before it hit our television screens. I'd rather work extra hard at something I do love, even if it takes a little longer. Is that okay? Terry Minsky's original concept was titled, What's Lizzie Thinking?, and was set in high school. But there's more. Mini Lizzie, the animated version of the tween living inside her head, almost didn't exist. No big at all. I merely cemented my social status to that of a nobody for, oh, I don't know, eternity? Initially, they considered using voiceovers to capture Lizzie's thoughts. Needless to say, that would not have had the same impact as the animated figure we all know and love. She helped the audience understand Lizzie because she brought her internal monologue to life. And clearly, a lot of these people do not rock and hopefully will change. Does that make me a bad person? Minnie Lizzie made the show extra engaging and became a character in her own right in the process. Number 3. A Different Lizzie McGuire When the role of Lizzie McGuire was being cast, one of the stars in contention was none other than Lindsay Lohan. Gabe. Okay, there is no secret. It's all about the skill. Though she didn't get the part, the actress went on to star in Disney's Get a Clue and in fan favorite films like Mean Girls. I had to pretend to be plastic. <laughs> Buddy, you're not pretending anymore. You're plastic. Another starlet who was considered for the role was Sarah Paxton, who went on to play the titular mermaid in Aquamarine. Funnily enough, she later landed a one episode guest spot on the show. It's been really, really, really cool being your class president. And I'm really, really, really bummed that my term is over. But I'm really, really, really psyched to introduce to you your new class president. Of course, the part of Lizzie McGuire ultimately went to the one and only Hilary Duff, and the rest was Disney Channel history. <laughs> Number 2. The Bra Episode Lizzie McGuire made waves when it depicted Lizzie and Miranda's experience buying their first bra. I want a bra, okay? A bra! A bra! We want a bra! I want a bra! A bra! The episode, titled Between a Rock and a Bra Place, was honest, funny, and stunningly accurate. It's such a classic that the cast recently did a virtual table read of the episode, during which the writers shared some behind-the-scenes details about its conception. It was sort of a thing where I was like, could we do this? Is this a thing we could, like, could we write about bras on the Disney Channel? The feedback we got was, well, maybe. Apparently, the network had some specific rules that complicated matters. 
For instance, there were limits on how often the word bra could be used and around showing the garments up close. It's it's kind of like Jaws in the original Jaws. <laughs> That's what the bra it. was. Yeah, you know? <laughs> Plus, they insisted on the bra plot being countered by a boy narrative. Thankfully, the writers made it all work, and the iconic episode was born. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Sequel That Never Was the Lizzie McGuire franchise, from the show to its movie, was hugely successful for Disney. In fact, there were talks to keep it going with a second film. Not only that, they wanted to head to high school with the gang in a new show. But after conflicts over money persisted, the plans shuttered on less than ideal terms. At the same time, stories pegging Hilary Duff as a difficult star began emerging. If this is about that whole bizarre, parallel universe, Italian rock star Lizzie suddenly a diva thing, I know all about it. But it was no coincidence. According to her mom and manager, it was a smear campaign orchestrated by Disney. She said, quote, In my wildest dreams, I cannot imagine adults beating up on a 15-year-old kid in the papers like they have. This has all been some crazy scheme to set you up and embarrass you on stage. Fortunately, Duff made it past the drama, and her career thrived. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.